I preached a message about those people who have missed the first Christmas. And today I want to tell you the rest of the story. I want to tell you about those who found Christmas, the first Christmas. Back then, the political leaders and the powerful people missed first Christmas. Uh, Caesar Augustus missed Christmas. King Herod missed Christmas. But not only some of these powerful and mighty people and kings have missed the first Christmas, also some poor people missed the first Christmas. Some of them were the closest and the nearest to Jesus. They missed Christmas. The innkeeper was very close physically uh, to Jesus and to Mary and Joseph. But he missed Christmas. And so today I want to tell you about two groups of people who have found Christmas. The shepherds in the field who were very close to the manger around Bethlehem area, they found Christmas. The wise men who have traveled long distances, the Magi's, they too found Christmas. These two groups of extreme contrasts, two groups of men who were on the opposite end of the spectrum uh, of life and society, uh, two groups of people who represent the very poor and the very rich, two groups of people who stand truly in a contrast with each other in terms of education, in terms of knowledge. Both groups, those extreme groups, they both found the first Christmas. If it tells us anything, that whether you know Jesus or you don't know Jesus, that Jesus is for everyone. He is for the rich and the poor and everyone in between. No one can look down their noses about another group of people and say, Christ is not for them. Christ is for everyone. In fact, I want to share with you several things. First, I want to tell you, four contrasts between those two groups of people. Then I want to tell you about four similarities between those two groups of people. The first contrast between the poor shepherds and the rich and powerful scientists of the day, as far as society was concerned, the shepherds were among the most desperate element of society. They really were. They were people who are absolutely mistreated. I was trying to think of a class of people that would represent, I couldn't think of any, because these folks were viewed as dishonest and crafty. Their reputation for honesty was so bad that their testimony will never be accepted in a court of law. But if you probably get the gypsies and the, and the vagrants and con men and you roll them in one, you still won't even understand what the shepherds were like at that time. On the other hand, the wise men of the Persian Empire, they were the creme de la creme of society. They were the men of influence. They were treated with respect and with difference. So much so that when they arrived in Jerusalem, a totally foreign country, uh, a country that is far away from home. When they arrived, they didn't go to the gas station to ask for directions. <laughs> they went to the king's palace. That's where they first arrived. They went in there and listen, you've got to be a VIP to be received at Herod's palace. <laughs> I mean, you've got to be a very, very significant foreign dignitary to get the red carpet treatment. The shepherds, on the one hand, they cannot even get to the, to the gate of Herod's palace. But these guys got a, a state dinner in their honor. The second contrast was financial. The poorest and the richest. The shepherds had nothing. They were literally one tiny step away from beggars of the day. Their income was below, way below, minimum wage. When the angels told them about the birth of Jesus, they came with no gift. They had nothing to give. They brought themselves. 
They had nothing to bring. Back then, uh, manual labor was far, far higher than a shepherd. On the other hand, the wise men of Persia, they were men of financial means. Uh, they had enough money to be able to travel this long distance, and it's a long distance on camels, long distance with an entourage of bodyguards and security people because you don't travel with gold and with, with that kind of wealth without having a huge entourage protecting you. And they had enough money to be able to travel this long distance. Not many people could have done that. A and they have arrived laden with very expensive gifts for Jesus. Then there is a third contrast, and that is contrast of education. Their education, the shepherds, they were literate. They could not even read enough to be able to read the Scripture. So all they knew about the Scripture and the, and the prophecies and the fulfillment of the prophecy is what they heard orally from the rabbis and the teachers in the, in, in, in the synagogues. By contrast, the Magi were famous for their knowledge, their knowledge of science, their knowledge of art, their knowledge of history, and above all, their knowledge of astronomy. They were renowned for that. Uh, they were the scientists, the top scientists of their day. So much so that when this unique star appeared to announce the birth of the Messiah, they were the first one to discover it. They were the first one to analyze it. They're the first one to understand what it means. But finally, the fourth contrast between those two groups of people is a contrast of proximity. Those of you who have traveled to Israel, you've seen the shepherd's field. It's right there at the bottom of the hill, and the manger would have been up the hill. I mean, literally, they're stone throw away. <laughs> it's just a few minutes walk to go from where they were to come to the manger. The wise men traveled great distances. I mean, back then would have taken them several, not weeks, but months to get there because they would travel at night when it's cooler, and then they would rest in the daytime. Then it would have taken them months to get to, to Bethlehem. They came to, from the very far reaches of the world while the shepherd only walked a few yards to the, to the manger. And if the story tells us anything, it tells us that wherever you are and whoever you are, Christ is for you. Christ is for you. You can be assured that Christ is inviting you today. Christ is the Savior of everyone who receives Him as Savior and Lord. This is the great news of Christmas. And then if you look at those two diverse group of people, you have to find there are at least four things in common, at least four. The shepherds and the wise men were as diverse as it comes. Shepherds and wise men were at two extremes, opposites. And yet they both <laughs> came to the same Jesus. In fact, their experiences, these common experiences, uh, manifest themselves in four ways. The shepherds and the wise men both received an invitation. And today, the invitation comes to everyone who would hear it. The invitation is whomsoever would come. They received the announcement of the birth of God's only Son. Listen to the announcement, the spectacular announcement that the shepherds heard in Luke 2, 9, 10, and 11. The glory of the Lord shone around them. Don't rush. When you read those words, don't, don't rush. When he talks about the Shekinah glory of the Lord, now remember Moses couldn't even look at the Shekinah glory. He could not see the glory of God. Moses, the favored prophet, 
And yet, God chose to show these humble shepherds His Shekinah glory. And the, the Lord's glory shone around them. And the angel said to them, you've got to understand that this glory was so terrifying. There is no doubt they were probably shaking like a leaf. Well, what is this? I mean, there's nothing ever in experience like this. And the angel, the first thing he said to them, he didn't make the announcement first. He said, don't be terrified. <laughs> don't be afraid. They were fearful. Don't be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. As if that was not enough. This says more angels showed up. Can you imagine probably millions of them up in the sky? Verse 13. And they said, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. It was a sight and sound that is dazzling. Um, on the other hand, the announcement to the wise men was not like that. Probably if they saw something like that, they might not have been moved. Or These are intellectual men. These are men of science. These are men that are thinking men. And make no mistake about it, God does not speak to two of us the same way. He speaks to each of us individually. He knows of what we met. He knows our thinking. He knows our differences. He knows our thoughts. He knows whether we are emotional or intellectual. And He deals with us and He speaks to us in a way that is relevant to us. That's the way the Lord works. And so, to these intellectual men... Uh, it was equally spectacular, his, his invitation, but it was different. Uh, these men of science who have been poring over the books and reading of the prophecies of Daniel that he left in the Persian Empire, and they are studying the stars, they're spending hours uh, gazing into the heavens. The Lord spoke to them differently from the way he spoke to the shepherd. Now, beloved... Today, we don't see that. We don't see the angels singing. We don't see the, the look up the stars and try to figure it out. But you see, today, God speaks to us through His Word. You can open the Scripture anywhere in the Scripture and you read the good news of Christmas. Either Christ is coming in the Old Testament or He has come in the New Testament. That's how God communicates the good news in His Word. And one of the tragedies of our time today is that 80% of those who call themselves believers in Jesus Christ never crack a Bible. What despots could not accomplish is accomplished by so-called Christians today by not reading the Word of God. God speaks to us today. To everyone, everywhere, through His Word. He's announcing the good news that the baby born in Bethlehem more than 2,000 years ago is the only Savior and the only Lord and the only way to heaven. And the second similarity is this. They both were invited. That's the first similarity. Both groups responded to the invitation. They responded to the invitation. Can you imagine... <laughs> either the shepherds or the wise men turning down the invitation of the king of the universe, the God of gods. Can you imagine that? It would have been impossible. This is an unprecedented invitation. This is a unique invitation. This is a great honor. Some people literally don't sleep at night when they get invited to Buckingham Palace or the White House and excited but this is the King of kings and the Lord of all lords. This is an invitation from the creator of the world. This is an invitation from the God of gods. Imagine, imagine, try to imagine the shepherds after seeing this spectacular sound and sight and the incredible voices of the angels. And then they said, well, you know, I just, uh, uh, yeah, we saw this announcement, but we're really not worthy of it. It's for people who are worthy of it. Uh, uh, you know, we, are, we heard that announcement, but uh, we're not ready for it yet. Oh, well, let's just wait. Uh, or or the, we heard the announcement, but it's not for folks like us. It's for these folks over there. It's religious people. It, it, it really should be for those who are running the Sanhedrin. 
We heard the announcement. Let us not respond. We've heard the announcement. But we have nothing to give. We're going to go empty-handed, so might as well. Let's just wait. Imagine that. It would have been impossible. Or can you imagine these wise men, after they saw in the sky, unprecedented, never heard of in all the history of astronomy, they saw this unique star announcing the birth of the divine Son of God. Imagine them saying to themselves, yeah, this is a spectacular thing for sure. But it's too far to go. Let's just kick our shoes and watch television. You know, it's just too much bother. I mean, just think about how the heat of the day and the cool at night and, and just think about the long journey and think about all the stuff and then they kind of sit back and don't go. But they didn't. Both groups responded to the invitation. What about you? You know the message. You probably heard it before, but then you rejected it. Let me warn you, you either going to receive him as Savior today, this Christmas season, or one day you're going to have to face him as judge. And that's why the Bible talks about when you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Don't let callous build up. How do you get a callus in your skin, in your, in, your, in your hand? You just rub for a long period of time. And all of a sudden, you'll have a callus where there's no feeling anymore. Let me warn you. If that happens spiritually, sooner or later you're going to face him as judge. Accept his invitation. He's calling you today. Then there's a third similarity between these two men, two groups of men, of extreme contrast. The intellectual and the uneducated. The rich and powerful. And those who have no influence at all. The third similarity is that they both, when they received the invitation, they obeyed the invitation. They came to Christ. They, regardless of the distance, regardless of the background, they came and they found the Savior. This is the apex of the two stories. The shepherds found what the angel told them in the field, and the wise men found the object of the meaning of that unusual star that is nothing like it in history. Neither of them was disappointed. Neither of them was misled. Neither of them was deceived. Neither of them was dismayed. Neither of them was regretful for obeying the invitation. And, beloved, it's the same today. Back on Wednesday, March 4th, 1964, I responded to Jesus' invitation in my life. I can tell you, even in the darkest and the most desperate hours of my life, and I have seen few days like that, not one time have I ever regretted receiving Jesus as the Savior and Lord of my life. Not one time. In fact, it's the opposite. In those times, he was the only friend that I could have. He's the only one who lit the darkness in my life. He's the only one who lifted the loads. He's the only one who comforted me in many a broken times. I'll make you a promise. You'll never look back. The moment you surrender your life to Christ... What they had in common is that they, both groups, received the invitation. Both groups obeyed the summon to come to the Christ of Christmas. And the third is that they, both groups, found the Savior. No disappointment. And then... The fourth similarity between the two groups of men who of extreme, extreme contrast, opposite sides of the spectrum. 
is that when they found the Savior, they worshipped Him. They worshipped Him as Lord. In Matthew 2, 11, it says, The wise men, on coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped Him. It's in the masculine pronoun. They worshipped Him. They did not worship his blessed mother. They worshipped him. In Luke 2.20, it says, When the shepherd heard the news and came to Christ, they worshipped God. Beloved, to know the Lord is to bow to him alone. To know his grace is to surrender your all to him alone. To experience his unconditional love is to live for him alone. Not a divided life. Thank you for watching this program. Uh, Leading the Way, which is the ministry inside the Kingdom Sat, I bring it to you every day in English, Arabic, and French in the hope that God will use it to minister to you and to your needs. And I pray that God has led many of you to greater and higher depth in walking with Him as a result of Malakot Sat. God bless.